Good morning. We're gonna start the day with some desserts. <laughs> So we're about to get these pastries for Ruthie. She loves pastries, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. for breakfast. I think it's pastel de nata. After that, we're gonna go to the Ribeira. It's beautiful there. It's the river front, and you can see a great view of the city. You can cross over by boat or by the bridge. We're gonna do it by the ferry boat. And then after that, we're gonna do a wine tour. Or maybe just one winery because, you know, we don't drink that much. Yeah. And then we're gonna come back over to the other side and do like a few museums and indoor things because it's supposed to rain again later. So many people that I should definitely it. try this in Portugal. I hope it's delicious. It's really good. <laughs> Very much needed. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So this is an egg custard, right, Ruthie? Egg custard. That tastes like phenomenal. It? This is so good. I'm so happy that I'm eating this. And we haven't had breakfast in so long, I feel like. Except for yesterday. <laughs> Cameron ordered this bread. He thought it was a cake, and then it turned out to be just like bread with butter. But Portuguese bread is so good that I'm really happy that we ordered this, because now we have the savory with the sweet. For the two pastries that we got and two coffees, it cost us three euro and 50 cents. So amazing value, amazing vibe. Now we're going to the Ribeira. I'm working on my Portuguese pronunciation. Definitely not getting there quite yet, but working on it. Honestly, I can't get over how beautiful the streets are here. The weather right now has been incredibly unpredictable. It said it's gonna be sunny, and then out of nowhere there's a ton of rain, and then now it's see. slowing it's down. Like sunny over there, and yeah. there's a rain cloud right above us. I think <laughs> once we get down to the river, we'll get clear skies and get to show you the as a city with the sun in the background. Oh, hey. This was actually made in the 1500s by Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> Honestly, this whole city kind of looks like it could be something out of Game of Thrones, right? Oh. I still got a rock in my shoe. Still rocking her shoes. <laughs> If y'all like good music, you'd listen to Flamingosis. Cue his music now. <laughs> Taking the river taxi. All right, we're on the taxi. It's three euro per person to cross over. And across there, there's a lot of wineries, restaurants, and you could walk back across the bridge, and that's what we're looking to do. That ride was like a minute. I think a, an hour long cruise around the river is around 15 euro, which isn't too bad, but we figured we would just take the boat right across and then walk around the city and walk back around the bridge. Now that we're across the river, we're going to head to our first winery and probably the only winery. Uh, it's actually only a 10 minute walk, even though it's the furthest one away from everything. So you can tell how small Porto is. Yesterday we met a tourism guide and he explained that this winery is actually one of the more affordable wineries and a lot of the wineries here are owned by a corporation. This specific one is privately owned. He said the wine quality is really, really good and the price cannot be beat. Oh, whipping it. Whipping it. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. 
I honestly don't know how they make these tight turns, but Portugal's got some of the best drivers in the world. Yeah, an American would see that and be like, ah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going a different way. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn around. Is there another way? We got really lucky today because usually they only do um, tastings by reservation, but they were really nice. They had an opening for us. So we're able to do the tasting. Here they have two different tastings, right? They have the port wine, which is a sweeter wine. It's more of like a dessert type wine. And then they have the Duro wine. And the Duro wine is like more of like a dinner wine, one that you like more savory foods. Um, Ruthie and I typically like the Duro over the port. Uh, but they're both the same price, so they're around 750 euro per person in order to try three different wines. Our guide just gave us a little introduction to this wine. It comes from their estate. The grapes are grown facing the north, so they only get the sun from the morning, and uh, that makes them less sweet. So I'm really excited to try this wine because we like wines that are a little less sweet and more on the dry side. Oh, I like this one. I like this one a lot. This wine is a Doro wine. It's aged for less than a year. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want the, the wood to be overpowering and make the wine more oaky. They want you to taste the flavors and it's a little bit lighter as a whole. So this specific one was aged for three months. It's really good with like light foods, like an appetizer and whatnot. And it smells amazing. So let's see how it tastes. Wow. It's very flavorful. Ruthie, you're gonna really like this. Try it out. Hammer said it smells like butter and he's not wrong. I like this one a lot. I like this one better than the first one. Same, I really like this one way more. It definitely does taste like butter. <laughs> it smells like butter. It's really raining right now. We'll see what it's like when we leave. <laughs> <laughs> the first one we tried, the white wine, was a blend of two different grapes. The second one was actually a blend of five different grapes. This one is just one grape. She said it's a little bit smoother and will be very delicious, so I'm excited to try it. And this one's my favorite. They saved the best for last. Definitely my favorite, too. It is absolutely delicious. It's super rich in taste, and we have crackers to wash it down. We just met Pedro, and he works here at the Churchill Winery. He was explaining to us that the port wines here are made to be a little bit less sweet, right? Yes, that is true, because we are, we are the youngest port wine brand, founded in 1981, in a sector that has 300 years old of existence, so we need to be different. And we try to produce the ports not so sweet, we do a longer alcoholic fermentation process, so it means that we don't need to add so much brandy to stop the fermentation as the other companies. You should, you should try, you should yeah. try. Of course, it's still sweet because we can run, not run out from the sweetness of port, but we try to do it in a more elegant style and not so sweet. So, actually, let me offer you, Thank you this glass much. of the white. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful col color. Okay. You don't want to try it with good. us, Pedro? I can try with <laughs> you. Right. Yeah. Just drink from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheers. So. Mm. That's actually like that. a lot. Wait, I that like is this so so much. Yeah, that's a lot less sweet than typical. Yeah, no, sincerely, yes. sincerely. No, sincerely, I really do like this. This is a lot less <laughs> sweet than typical port wines. And that's no, this what I've is heard. awesome. It really doesn't do like the burning feeling. It feels really good. Exactly. It's very, it's very <laughs> smooth, not so sweet. One of the biggest things that I heard about the Churchill Winery is that it's privately owned. So a lot of the wineries over here are yes, they are. Owned, like, yeah, they are part right? from big groups. You have like three, four big groups that own different port wine brands, but here we we like to, to be independent. We still use a lot of the traditional techniques, for example, stomping the grapes. Really? Uh, yes, have you I done can, that yourself? Uh, yes, <laughs> once, probably uh, I last five, ten seconds, not more than that. But these guys, they do it between six to twelve hours a day during the harvest season. Okay, so for us, it's very important still using the traditional techniques, but then we, we, we add like a, a modern twist to our wines. Also can do cocktails. What I can <laughs> suggest, because we are speaking about a 10 years old white port, is to do a proper cocktail. So it, the idea is in a large glass to add 200 milliliters of the dry white port, 200 milliliters of saccharin gin, Okay. Fill the rest of the glass with tonic water, um, squeeze um, grapefruit, 
and mix the cocktail with the raspberry spray and it's what we call the Churchill Icebreaker Cocktail. The Churchill Icebreaker Cocktail. So I, I oh will God, suggest you, you at it. home to do that kind of cocktail and don't forget <laughs> the dry white ports. Okay? It's one of the best. It is. Honestly, if you're in New York City, I would highly recommend you guys at least try this Churchill White Port. I was pleasantly surprised and I know Ruthie was as well. So definitely recommend you guys check that out if you guys are in New York. I don't know if that's it. There we go. Alright, now I think we're going to check see. out the cellars. Want to see the cellars? Yeah. All the production happens in the Douro Valley region and I recommend you to go there because it's a beautiful region. Here it's more the aging process and the bottle. The wine inside of these big vats doesn't have so much contact to the surface area. Okay. This is incredible. How much wine is in one of these? An average of 50,000 liters. 50,000 <laughs> liters? Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of wine. Like Tyrion Lannister can't even drink that much. One of the big reasons why we bring the wine from the Duro Valley region, it's because we have lower temperature and more humidity. Usually it's natural. We have a big influence of the, the Atlantic Ocean that help us to keep the, the temperatures and uh, the humidity conditions correct. We only have two wines in the world that can age in such amazing way on the bottle. It's Port Wine and Madeira Wine, both Portuguese. By the wow, way. Portug <laughs> Portugal's doing it right. Am I right? <laughs> wow. Well, honestly, like I highly recommend if you're in Portugal to come to the Churchill Winery. Not only is it privately owned, but they do take so much care in their wine in general, and it tastes phenomenal. And Pedro here can explain to you everything that you need to know in terms of like what type of wine will be best fitting towards you. Here is where we age the white port that you are trying this mm -hmm. moment that age for 10 years on the barrel. It's on the top, so you know that this has been aging for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro, for joining us around, man. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. Okay. Make sure that when you come here to visit Pedro. That place was awesome. The wine was so good. I'm just so happy also that it's completely sunny outside. We thought it was gonna be raining all day. We're gonna head over to the bridge and take some photos up there. That was one of my favorite wines that I've ever been to. And now we're gonna go all the way over to the bridge that we talked about before. I'm legit never gonna get over this view. I mean, look at this behind me right now. This one keeps making all types of noises. Finally made it to the bridge. The lower half. We didn't work very hard to get here. So it's incredibly narrow on the bridge. There's only room for like two people at a time and people are walking on both ends. Definitely if you're afraid of heights and narrow spaces, don't recommend. But I would recommend walking across because it's absolutely beautiful and you get a great view of the city. Check it out. I kind of want to go to that side because we haven't really seen that much of the city yet on the other side. Yeah, let's go. Hurry, hurry. Hooray. so far talking about the brotherhood and like church things from way back in the day so we're gonna learn a little bit about what it was like as a, a member of the brotherhood in Portugal many years ago who is five euro to come here the five euro includes here and the tower we just met Juan at the church museum the church the, the church is Turkish claims Oh, I am not going to be able to pronounce it. Uh, Clarish Tower. Yes. Tower. He's going to walk us up to the top. Apparently, the view from there is beautiful. It's about 250 steps, 225, and 49 bells. We're going to take the journey up right now with him. The tower oh, is incredibly narrow. It was awesome, but it's super tight. It's only room for one person at a time. And even up here, it's really tight, as you guys can see. And it's still not raining. <laughs> it just started raining, which is our cue to leave. 
As soon as we started walking down, it started pouring. So we got extremely lucky, but look at this right now. We were walking on the way home and came across a cafe. So now we're about to enjoy dinner and then make our way home afterwards. We really hope you guys enjoyed this day in Porto. We're gonna enjoy a full day tomorrow before we head over to Lisbon. Please let us know in the comments below if you like this video or if you have any suggestions for future videos and be sure to like and subscribe. See you all on adventures tomorrow.